Oh my goodness, it's incredible. We have an Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy, in captivity for observation. Breaking news, Channel 4. The Australopithecus afarensis we planned on bringing back to the lab for testing has escaped. We have sent Sloan Castleman, on-site reporter, into the field to search for Lucy. We have embarked on a journey to look for Lucy. The lost Australopithecus afarensis. And we need to find... <laughs> just slipped through our fingers. We're embarking on a journey to the park where we think she might be, as there's a lot of grass. I'm on the hunt for a lost Australopithecus apparatus named Lucy. Have you seen her? I'm not sure I have. How could I tell she was different from a human? Well, let me enlighten you about the main similarities and differences between Australopithecus apparatus and humans. The Australopithecus apparatus species is fully bipedal, like humans are. Scientists have found evidence for this by examining the hip bones of the Australopithecus afarensis. Similar to humans, the bones of the afarensis' hip region is shorter from top to bottom than apes and, apes and more bowl-shaped. This causes the pelvis to be more stable when having to uphold the weight of the torso to stand upright or move bipedally. The shape of the tibia of the afarensis is also similar to that of humans. This explains why the afarensis walks upright like humans. The entirety of the egg of the afarensis is generally shorter than the leg of a modern human, but in general, the leg and foot bones of the afarensis are more closely related to humans than those of apes. This is all used as evidence of early hominid bipedalism. There is a fair amount of data, however, that the afarensis is adapted to live in both the trees and on the ground, unlike humans, who are only able to live on the ground. Speaking on, the, on physical structure and, composer, uh, and composure, afarensis is generally more ape-like than human-like, but there were some similarities between us and them. For example, afarensis have teeth more like modern humans than apes. However, they do have large pointed canine teeth, like apes, that do not project as far out. Another similarity between afarensis and humans is that afarensis' skull size indicates that the skull develops more slowly, like modern human skulls do. Scientists have discovered, however, that the brain of afarensis is more ape-like, only about one-third the size of a modern human's brain. Also, although the afarensis skull develops slowly like humans, they grow quickly after birth and reach adulthood before modern humans, comparatively. This rapid childhood development shows us that afarensis has a shorter maturation period than modern humans, meaning they have less time for parental guidance and socialization during this time in their lives. While humans do experience some sexual dimorphism in terms of males being generally slightly larger than females, the afarensis has drastic sexual, sexual dimorphism. Males were about twice the size of females. Other main differences between humans and the Australopithecus afarensis species are found in the skeleton of the species. For example, afarensis has a hyoid bone, which suggests that it had a voice box like chimps do. Humans, on the other hand, have vocal cords. <laughs> The Australopithecus afarensis, unlike humans, has shoulder blades that face upward like those of gorillas. Humans have shoulder blades that are lateral. The fingers of the afarensis are short and curved, which make them well suited for climbing. Human fingers are more short and straight. Hi there! Have you seen an Australopithecus afarensis running around here? I'm not sure. What do they look like? Well, the Australopithecus afarensis is bimodal. It walks on two feet. But, as the oldest hominid, it still retains many ape-like characteristics such as tree climbing, a small brain, and a large jaw. Females grow to approximately 100 centimeters in height, whereas men grow to 150. Along with other ape characteristics, the Australopithecus afarensis has a cone-shaped ribcage. The brain of this species averages at approximately 430 cubic centimeters and measured at 1.3% of the body weight. Developing into a more human-like brain, the brain exhibits signs of enlar an enlarging cerebral cortex. The skull remains similar to the apes with a low sloping forehead, projecting face, and a prominent jawbone. Unlike modern-day apes, however, the spinal cord connects to the center of the skull base rather than the back. The males have a sagittal crest on the back of their skulls to hold their extremely large jaws, and also suggests that they had a voice box very similar to a chimpanzee. A semicircular inner ear shows that the Australopithecus afarensis was not as agile or fast on two feet 
as later species of the hominin group. The jaw, fairly long and narrow, represents an intermediate between the humans and the great apes. The pelvis is short and wide, much like humans, but lacking the characteristics necessary for human-like strides and mobility. The limbs display both human and ape-like features. The Australopithecus afarensis has slanted femurs, short thigh bones, and extremely powerful arms, and shoulder blades similar to those of apes. Oh, I think I saw something like that over there. Okay. Successful. Lucius slipped through our fingers yet again. Back to the chopper! Lost Australopithecus afarensis. Do you know where I can look? Uh, well, what kind of place would you find that in? Well, they've lived in Eastern African countries such as Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Well, the Galleria sounds pretty different than all of those countries. You might try looking someplace else. Well, we kind of brought them back from Africa. However, they live in both trees and on the ground, which is probably one of the main reasons that their species survived so long. So they could be around here somewhere. Oh. They might live right on the border of the forest in the savannah. They live in groups around the desert, and the males most likely remain in one group, while the females move around after becoming sexually mature. Do you see anywhere like that? This kind of is a jungle area, so maybe look around here. That sounds like a good idea. I think that's all. Hey, I heard you are a wild one. Ooh, I took you. Great place to look. Australopithecus afarensis are social creatures and do live in small groups of men, women, and children. I think I'll go look in the log as they use sticks and non-durable plant-like substances as tools. Okay, the log is free. I think I saw Lucy trying to buy ice skates. I'm gonna go try and find her.
complicated way if, if Australopithecus afarensis can't. Well, according to an article published by the Australian Museum, the speech of modern humans requires a complex coordination of breathing muscles in order to vary pitch and produce long sentences, like I'm doing now. Because the afarensis has a comparatively narrow spinal cord to humans, they lack the nerves that aim enable the fine control of muscles necessary to coordinate breathing and speaking. Finally, the brain is large, but it's still only as large as a chimps compared to humans, and it's structured similarly to chimps, and so therefore the afarensis is capable of proto-language, which is defined as a form of communication that lacks the syntax and grammar of modern human language. Enough talking. Step on it! <laughs> Look, there she is! Yeah, Lucy just got a sample, which makes sense because um, afarensis have a plant-based diet and they mainly eat leaves, fruit, um, seeds, roots, nuts, and insects, and occasionally the small vertebrate. Records of their teeth indicate soft, sugar-filled fruits. When vegetation wasn't plentiful, Scientists think they ate hard, crunchy things due to the size and shape of their teeth. The funny thing is, micro dentalware studies show that the times of poor veg at times of poor vegetation, they still didn't eat brittle things. So, there's a mystery in science regarding the relationship between the afarensis and the potential of their teeth to eat hard things and their diet. I'd like to buy this chocolate. Okay, that's what they do Okay, here's the pieces. Next customer, please. continues in the wild. Back to you, Sloan. Ooh, ooh. Ah, ah. Sloan Castleman in the field. I'm trying to call out to Lucy. Scientists have concluded with the evidence available to them that A. afarensis have no language or speech abilities. Therefore, my best shot at communicating with Lucy is through how we hear chips speak with each other. As with all apes, Communication is very important to the Australopithecus afarensis, and scientists are led to believe that they may have been as vocal as modern chimps are today. There are a few important factors about Australopithecus afarensis' physical structure that indicate why they did not have the language or speech capabilities. First of all, the base of the skull of the afarensis is ape-like in shape, meaning that they, have, they had ape-like vocal tracts. Ape-like vocal tracts are limited in the range of sounds they can produce, so therefore affer the afarensis is restricted in this way. Have you seen an afarensis around here? Well, I did see an ape-like creature hammering on some wood. Would that be her? No, afarensis, can't, afarensis never use tools. 
It's probably just a person in a gorilla suit. That's pretty intriguing. Have archaeologists found any recent evidence to support these claims? Well, yes, actually. In 2010, fossil bones with cut marks on them were found in Ethiopia, which scientists believe were put there by, af by an afarensis. Oh man, we never found Lucy. I can't believe we wasted all day on this. You! Australia, I can't wait. Oh, Sorry. I just, I just hold on. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. Lucy, the Australopithecus afarensis is in captivity in captivity for testing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she a problem? Oh, she's gonna run across. Okay, wait, wait, let's practice. So, what exactly? <laughs> Ben, this is Ben. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no, should I? Okay, good enough. Okay. Okay, now we need to flip. Now we need to flip the camera around.